Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta and today I wanted to do a video for those people who need some sort of operation but are actually very worried that um, and they're not sure whether their heart will cope with the strain of the operation. And uh, it's not infrequently that I come across people who are really struggling with bad knees or they need an eye operation and they're waiting for several months to see a cardiologist before being go given the go-ahead to go and have the operation. And some people actually don't even bother because they're so worried about their hearts and the fact that something could happen when they have the operation that they don't have it at all. And this undoubtedly affects their quality of life because, um, you know, um, <clears throat> their, their quality of life is largely dictated by these other symptoms. Uh, but they don't have anything done about it because they're worried about their heart. So I did a uh, little lecture to a bunch of anaesthetists about this and I wanted to take this opportunity to try and reassure you that actually your risks are not as great as you may think. Um, now, the first thing to understand is that when you are faced with the possibility of having an operation, you need to ask yourself certain questions, okay? The first thing is, do you need emergency surgery? If it's emergency life-saving surgery, then it is generally recommended that you don't need to worry about your heart. Just Your surgeon should just get on because if they don't do the surgery, you know, you, it could risk your life. So there's no real merit in waiting for an assessment of your heart. Just get on with it. If you have urgent or semi-urgent surgery, then it's only really worth delaying this if there was a significant severe problem with your heart or uh, <clears throat> an unstable heart condition and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so it's largely those people who need elective non-cardiac surgery and so it's non-urgent okay it's elective and by that what I mean is that you can afford to wait because it's a bad knee or a bad hip or a cataract operation so you can afford to wait it's not that you're going to come to an immediate harm but it is something that is affecting your quality of life and you'd really like to get it done um, and it is in those people that it is important to try and understand what a person's risks are from their heart if it's emergency just get on with it what's the point of worrying about the heart when whatever you're having the operation for could potentially threaten your life so it is really those people who have non-urgent, non-life-threatening um, uh, conditions that need surgery. And by surgery, I mean surgery which is not on the heart itself, but somewhere else in the body. And in those people, it's worth knowing what the status of the heart is, okay? Uh, because if you can perform a risk assessment, you can work out what the patient's risks are from that surgery, particularly to their heart. And we know that about 10% of patients who have um, uh, surgery uh, will develop a complication within 30 days with regards to their heart. So um, let's say you are someone who needs your knee done, okay, and you're worried about your heart. Well, it's non-cardiac surgery, so it's not unreasonable to uh, find out about the heart before proceeding. However, if you're less than um, <clears throat> 45 years and you have ever ha never had a problem with your heart in the past, then you don't need any more information about the heart. You can just go ahead and have the operation. Okay, so if you're less than 45 years and you have no previous problems, have had no previous problems with your heart, go ahead and have your operation. If you are between the ages of 18 and 44 and if you do have a history of heart problems, let's say um, you were born with a heart complaint or you have atrial fibrillation or something like that, then it's worth having something called a cardiac risk assessment. If you're above the age of 45, then it's worth knowing about your heart. However, it gets much easier because to try and work out what your risk is, the first thing I would recommend is that you ask yourself these questions. Number one, Am I known to have heart artery narrowings? Okay, if you are, so you have to score yourself out of six for this. Am I known to have heart artery narrowings? Do I have kidney problems? Number three, do I have diabetes? Number four, 
Have I previously ever had heart failure? Number five. Have I ever had a stroke or mini stroke? Number six. Am I going to have very high risk surgery? And by high risk surgery, what I mean is high risk for the heart, and that is usually vascular surgery. So if you're having your blood vessels operated on, if you're having an aneurysm repaired, then that is high risk surgery. Cataracts, knee operations, these are not considered high risk surgery. Okay, so you have to ask yourself these six questions. Do I have heart artery narrowings? Do I have any kidney problems? Am I diabetic? Do I have previous heart failure? Have I had strokes or mini strokes in the past? And am I going to have very high risk surgery? If you score zero, i.e. you don't have any of those things, go ahead and have your operation. You'll be fine. There's no other testing that is necessary. If you score two or more, then it's worth having further assessment. But if you score none of these things, go ahead. Okay. If you score only one, it's fine. You can go ahead and have your operation. Your risks are generally low. It's only if you score more than two, if you score two or more in that six point uh, list that I've told you. Then the next question to ask yourself is what can I do in my day to day life? Okay. If you are someone who is generally uh, fine, you lead a normal life, you are not limited by symptoms of chest discomfort, breathlessness, significant palpitations, um, then that's a really, really good sign that you'll do fine with surgery. If you can't walk up two flights of stairs without having to stop because you're getting chest discomfort or because you're getting breathless uh, or you're getting palpitations or you're blacking out, then that definitely requires further cardiac assessment. But if you can walk up more than two flights of stairs without any limitation, without having to stop, then there is no reason why you need any further assessment. You can just go and have your operation. Okay. And then after that, you have to ask yourself, what kind of surgery am I having? I know that I mentioned that in one of the six things, but ask yourself this, am I having low risk surgery? Or am I having very high risk surgery? If you're having very high risk surgery, and by that I mean your blood vessels, your aorta, your um, uh, blood vessels, so if you need a, a, a bypass of your leg vessels, or if you is anything like that, then that's considered very high risk surgery. If you're having thoracic surgery or tummy surgery, then that's intermediate risk. If you're having um, surgery on your bones, your joints, your eyes, your skin, then that's low risk surgery. And if you're having low risk surgery, go ahead and have your operation. Your risks are very, very low. And therefore, it's only those people, okay, it's only those people who are, number one, scoring highly in that six point list I told you, i.e. score more than, score two or more, and you are limited uh, and you can't do more than two flights of stairs without having to stop because of shortness of breath, chest discomfort, palpitations, or blackouts, or uh, you're having very high, and if you're having very high surgery. In those situations, it's worth getting checked out by a cardiologist and getting a full, um, a full checkup. Uh, but otherwise, if you don't, uh, if, you, if, you, if you score low, if you've got good functional tolerance, and if you have, um, if you're going through low risk surgery, there is really, really no reason to wait months to go and get assessed by a cardiologist before you could have your operation. In this setting, I know there are some doctors who are quite nervous about um, anesthetizing patients, but it's well worth remembering that that anesthetic table is probably one of the safest places to be if something goes wrong. The second thing to say is, um, in that setting where you're waiting months and months and getting disheartened that um, I can't have my operation, I'm going to have to live in pain, go and see a cardiologist. I would, I would recommend, you know, it's worth just going and seeing a good cardiologist, even privately, if necessary, so that you're not waiting ages and struggling with your quality of life, and get him to um, uh, reassure you and reassure your anaesthetist and reassure your surgeon, and then you can go ahead and have your operation. So <clears throat> I hope this was helpful. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm on. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I have a website, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. I have a Facebook page, um, which I don't know how you get to it, but you can type in yourcardiology at gmail.com, and uh, that will get you to my Facebook page. 
uh, I would be really grateful. I mean, if you found this useful, it'd be great if you could share it uh, with your friends and your colleagues. Hopefully, it may help someone. So thank you so much and all the best. Um,